In the last stream, we were working on the Colored Caves questline. We started, of course, by entering the Colored Caves, finding the Colored Temple, and using that Colored Temple to get our first mixed stone ingots, which we are still passively getting from our strainer over here. And then we spent the remainder of the episode kind of bulking up and improving our automation. We moved our strainers over, we added a ton more crafters, we started tinkering around with these level emitters, and we now have a much more efficient, much more fully automated setup for all of our resource production. And the only thing that I've really done between streams is I've gone ahead and set up the gold sieve mesh making setup over here. So I've added kind of the same setup that we had for the iron mesh over here. We're now able to make gold meshes. And as you can see over there, I am actively exporting those gold meshes over to the strainer for dust so that we can, in fact, get even more silver and gold going forward. And so now that that's taken care of, right at the end of the last episode, we made this advanced crafting table. And the next quest here wants us to make the elite crafting table. The only trouble with the elite crafting table is that it requires these resonant integral components. It also requires these crystal tine ingots and of course some black iron slate. The black iron slate, easy enough, we've made a ton of it. The crystal tine ingot is also gonna be a little tricky. We do have to make the diamond seeds that we mentioned in the last stream, but before that, the resonant integral component here requires four enderium ingots, two hardened glass, two lumium gears, and of course the previous tier reinforced integral component. We made those last episode to make the uh, gold advanced crafting table here. So most of these should be quite fine. Lumium is I think going to be easy enough. We can make this in the induction smelter with glowstone, tin and silver. The hardened glass is also easy enough. It's another induction smelter recipe with red sand, obsidian, and nether quartz. Thankfully, we can use the nether quartz dust here. We don't have to first run it through the crystallizer before we use it, which is very nice indeed. The only bit that's gonna be slightly tricky here is the enderium, and that is because the enderium requires either ender pearls or ender pearl dust, which you can only make, you guessed it, via ender pearls. And right now, we do not have any ender pearls at all. However, in the last stream, we did set up the summoning block over here that allows us to summon specific mobs if we right click with the right item and if we have the correct modifier block beneath the summoning block. And we used it in the last episode to summon blazers and I'm hoping that right at the start of today's stream, we can use it to summon multiple endermen enough to get enough ender pearls to actually make all of the resonant integral components. Now to do that, we need to right click an ender pearl fragment onto the summoning block with stone beneath it. Right now, we don't have any of those. There are a few ways we can get them. We could go try and find an enderman, kill that enderman, and then use that ender pearl that we get from that enderman to craft ender pearl fragments because they are indeed craftable. If we click on the recipe here, you can see you can craft one ender pearl into nine ender pearl fragments. There are a few ways to do that. You could go down under the floor of the ocean, try and find a cave and see if you can get an enderman to spawn. That would work. Another suggestion from the Twitch chat was that we could go to the nether. Uh, that would also work if we head on through here. If you can find a warped forest biome, which is this biome right here, the, uh, the green biome, I think there also might be a tiny one right here as well. Uh, those have a tendency to spawn a ton of endermen. And so it's quite possible you could find one there and then fight the endermen to try and get an ender pearl. And again, same idea. Alternatively, people have also said that if we find a shrine above the surface of the water, that we might be able to just find an ender pearl fragment in that shrine without having to fight any endermen. Now, the bad news here is that it looks like I cannot make a boat because you can't use the other woods here to make a boat, which is a little bit awkward. If I press M though, on the map here, we can see this shrine directly ahead of us to the north. Unfortunately, you can't quite see it in game. So it is, I think, a little far away. Also do bear in mind that if you do want to go above the surface, you do have to have the toxic air curio in your curio slot. Otherwise you will start to take damage as soon as you come up here. But if we head over to this direction, I'll call this a uh, shrine with a capital H for some reason. Uh, if we head over in that direction, which I think is north, I think it's this way, we should find that temple, hopefully somewhat quickly. And I've been told there's a good chance that we might find an ender pearl fragment inside of a chest in that shrine. If we don't find one here, we could also take a quick look at what looks like one over here in the top right. And then worst case scenario, we can head on through to the nether and see about fighting some of those endermen in 
the warp forest biome. Okay, so I don't see a chest here, but there's a good possibility we might have to dig around for one. So we did find something pretty interesting, and that is this shrine activation key block. This is actually pretty useful because if we look at the next quest line here, shrines, what we're going to do is we're going to craft these shrine skeleton keys once we have the elite crafting table. From there, we can then break them down much like we did with our previous skeleton keys into shrine key fragments. And then we can use those to craft the air key, earth key, water key, and fire key. Each one of these keys needs to be used on a shrine activation key block to generate a new shrine. And so we do actually need these going forward to utilize these keys. I think we need to find four of these if we're gonna make that work. No chest here though, and so I'm not actually very certain at all that we're gonna find anything over at, uh, at this temple, but I'll head over that way. I might also check out something like that as well to see if there's any kind of uh, loot that we can find in there. We could also potentially check out a couple of the other structures along the way. I do see some barrels over there that could possibly have some kind of loot inside of them. I don't see any barrels of any kind here, though. We do have a uh, bee nest, which is very interesting uh, underwater there. We do want to make sure we don't drown. That would be uh, the worst case scenario, but there's a good chance that we might find something useful in here. We did, nice, look at that. I will uh, also take the corridor key, that's also quite useful. And yeah, there is a ton of enderpearl fragments in here, as well as a couple of other things that could be potentially useful, but I don't necessarily think we need just this moment. I will take the B-Bucks, I will take the extra enderpearl fragments, and I'll do a quick slash home. And so now we should just be able to right click this onto our summoning block. Of course, as soon as we replace the block underneath it, right now we have lava under there, we need to swap that out and put down just regular stone. And now with the stone down, if we were to right click on the summoning block, it would spawn an enderman. Of course, this setup here is set up for a blaze. Endermen are three blocks tall, so we want to do something like this. And I do think that we do still want to try and fully block the Enderman in to prevent the Enderman from dealing any damage to us and to prevent it from teleporting away. Now, before we do actually spawn the Enderman in, I do want to get a different sword. Specifically, I'd like to get the Fluix Sword from Applied Energistics 2. It does have a slightly lower attack damage than our Diamond Sword, 6.5 attack as opposed to seven, but it always has at least looting one. And so as soon as we craft this, it's gonna have looting one on it, which just increases the chance of us getting an Ender Pearl when we kill the Enderman. And I think that's gonna be very much so worth it because we need even more Ender Pearls going forward. You'll see that the eye core here that we're gonna make requires four eyes of Ender. That's on top of all the Ender Pearls we need to make the crafting table. And if we look further forward, we need quite a few of these icons, and so I think we are going to need quite a lot of ender pearls in the future, and so I think it's worth a quick detour to try and make this fluid sword. To do that, we need three things. We need either a Certus Quartz or Nether Quartz sword, we need a Fluix block, and we need a smithing template. This one here is a Paper and Fluix crystals. So the Quartz sword should be fairly straightforward, although actually, I might go with the Certus Quartz sword, because we do need Certus Quartz for all of this. To get Certus Quartz, we take our Certus Quartz dust, and you guessed it, uh, whoops, we put it straight into our crystallizer. That's gonna turn the Certus Quartz dust into Certus Quartz crystals. Thankfully, quite quickly, it's only 3,000 words Stone Flux here for that craft. And then to turn those Certus Quartz crystals into Fluix crystals, we need to drop Nether Quartz, Redstone dust, and charged Certus Quartz into water. The charged Certus Quartz is the most important part there because right now we do not have any charged Certus Quartz, but we can charge our Certus Quartz using the charger. Thankfully, super easy to make, just iron and copper. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, we can just put that down directly on our Flux duct here. And hopefully, now if we take some Certus Quartz, we should be able to right click that on here. And after an unspecified period of time, this should convert. It does say device offline there. There's a good chance that we might actually have to put this down in such a way that either the top or bottom is connected to the flux duct. So it might be the case that I should maybe put it down like that. The device is still offline. Let me do one more test. I'll try connecting it to the top. It could also be actually that we're out of power completely. That is not ideal. I did actually just notice, I think as well, that this is losing power. It is, okay, so we do not have power. And the reason for that is I'm assuming we don't have any pink colored wood. And the reason that we don't have any pink colored wood, did we not reset up the craft for pink colored wood over here? 
We did. It's not turned on, Isaac. You fool. Neither is this one. Turn that on. That's turned on. That's turned on. That's turned on. Okay, perfect. That should hopefully start to bring things back online temporarily here. We can go ahead and uh, do something like this to get a bunch of wood into these sterling dynamos, but they should hopefully refill on their own. Also, I think I did just accidentally swap this from pink colored wood to my bedrock pickaxe when I tried to right click on it. But now that that is taken care of, let me once again try this. Not there. Let me try this here. There we go. You'll see in the top left that is filling up on power. And so now if we put our crystal in, it should get converted to a charged crystal. Nice. And so we'll do that a couple of times. And then how much nether quartz do we have? We've got 20 nether quartz, but of course a ton of nether quartz dust if we need more. And we've got 1,500 redstone there, more than enough for us to progress forward here. And so to make this happen, we need four flux crystals for the block. We need a fifth flux crystal for the smithing table. And then... That's kind of about it, actually. So we just need five of the flukes crystals. I do believe they're made in sets of two. And so we're going to have to make six of those, which means three charged Cetus Quartz, three Redstone, and three Nether Quartz. And so we actually just need one more charged Cetus Quartz crystal. Fantastic. And now if we head back over to here, we ideally would put this into like a, a contained piece of water. But to be fair, we can probably... Just, I was gonna say we could throw them into the ocean, but I think they might just actually float away if we do that. So what I'm gonna do real quick as a uh, somewhat haphazard solution is put down some water here, throw in the charged Cetus Quartz, the Nether Quartz, and the Redstone, and we should see all of those combine into Fluix Crystals. Nice. We can then get rid of this Cobblestone Abomination and craft up one block of Fluix, craft up one of these smithing templates, and then from there, we should be able to put everything together. We do also need this Certus Quartz Sword, of course. This can be made with non-charged Certus Quartz, which is fantastic. And then Smithing Table, we actually already have. Boom, boom, and boom. That gets us a Fluix Sword, which always has looting. One. And so now, let's take our Ender Pearl Fragment. Let's right-click that onto our summoning block. That's going to summon an Enderman for us. We can then attack that Enderman, and hopefully, we get an Ender Pearl. We didn't. But thankfully, we got 14 more tries here. And the good news is, of course, is that every time we do get uh, one Ender Pearl like that, we can then take that Ender Pearl and craft it down into even more fragments if we do want to fight even more Endermen. And so, basically, what I'm going to do now is head through and fight at least 12 Endermen here. I'm going to use all of the Ender Pearl fragments. I might even take some of the Ender Pearls, recraft them into fragments, and fight a few more. But we're just going to fight a ton of Endermen until we have a bunch of Ender Pearls. All right, and after using all of the fragments that we had, we got 15 Ender Pearls. We actually got multiple Ender Pearls from a multiple Endermen, so more than once we did get uh, two Ender Pearls there, which was quite nice. And I think 15 is going to be more than enough. So let's unbookmark all of this stuff. Let's start out with some Lumium, as we saw earlier, Silver, Tin, and Glowstone, all of which we have got quite a bit of Glowstone. We have got quite a bit of Tin, and we've got a fair bit of Silver. Let's drop all of those into there. Uh, that, of course, is going to have to go into the multi-server press with the gear working die once it is ready. Hardened glass, as we saw before, is going to be nether quartz. I'm going to use the quartz dust because I don't want to have to use our fully cooked nether quartz, as it were, along with just sand and obsidian. So sand, we do have. Obsidian, though, we do not have. And what I think I'll probably do is once again head on down to... Oh, we do have some obsidian here. How much of this do I need is my next question. I need two per integral component, and I do need four integral components. So I do need eight hardened glass. And right now I can only make six, so I do just need one more piece of obsidian, actually. So I will put this here. We can obviously go and get more lava from the pool that we had underground, and we can also make more lava using our magma crucible if we wanted to. Let's get you over in there. And then as for the enderium, we needed the lead, the ender pearls, and either diamonds or diamond dust. In fact, I think that uh, I was hoping we had some diamonds in dust form so we could use them in a similar way to our quartz dust. Unfortunately, we do not. That's fine, though. We do have a ton of lead. And, of course, we did just get a bunch of ender pearls. And so I think we should be pretty much good to go here. Let me use my time in a bottle, which does now have four and a half hours on it, to make this induction smelter just that little bit faster. And I'm actually not quite sure how much of the lumium we're going to need either. Uh, we need eight lumium per resonant integral component. And so, again, we need uh, eight lumium gears here in total, which is actually quite a few lumium gears. Let me make that, I would say, even faster. But the problem with the thermal expansion machines is they are limited on how fast power can go in. And you'll see that we are kind of losing power here, which is not ideal. So we'll take this out. We'll put you in there. That's going to get us even more of these. 
And I guess, real quick chat, we're just going to go through and kind of make all of these alloys. We need more aluminium, we need more hardened glass, and we need more enderium. And once that's done, we should be basically good to go on the resonant integral component. All right, so I think we are almost there. I'm just making some more signalum gears here for the reinforced integral components. Also, what I have gone ahead and done is put some inferior blocks into our strainer here with the purified water to allow us to get some more diamond dust because it does have to be specifically diamond dust that you put in the induction smelter with the ender pearls and the lead. We could, if we wanted to, have taken the diamonds that we do have and pulverized them into diamond dust, but that seemed like a bit of a waste given that we spent a bunch of time and a bunch of power with our crystallizer turning all of the diamond dust. I'm sorry, Scrooge, but look, I didn't mean to uh, hit you there, but we've already spent a bunch of time with the crystallizer turning our diamond dust into diamonds. It seemed a bit of a waste to spend even more time and more power turning them back into dust again. Over here, we can, of course, just make this a little bit faster and I think with that, we should be basically good to go. How are we doing on black iron slates? We have two, and I believe we need four. And so I am going to need at least two more of these. Fantastic. We'll throw those into the multi server press without the gear working die. Also, give that a quick tap as well to make it just that little bit faster. And then we need a total of 16 enderium over here to make this work. Whilst we wait for that, let me see if I can't quickly craft up one, uh, two, three, four, one two, three, four of these reinforced integral components. And then as soon as we have 16, oh, we don't quite have 16. Do I need one more ender pearl? I do indeed need one more ender pearl because we needed 16 ender pearls in total because it is a, uh, a two to two here. So it's a one to one ender pearls to enderium. And so I am actually gonna have to craft this down and use it over here to get yet another enderman. You can summon multiple endermen at once and you can kind of hurt multiple at a time as well. But I do find that for the most part, we do kind of end up just killing one of them at a time, like this. I think it might be a little bit faster than trying to do it actually one at a time. Perfect. Four is more than enough. Going forward, we just want to make sure we always have at least one ender pearl or one ender pearl fragment uh, lying around so that we can use that to get even more ender pearls should we need them. And I think that we are basically good to go here in terms of crafting up this final elite crafting table. I say final, there is an ultimate crafting table, but I don't believe that we're going to need the ultimate crafting table in this mod pack. So can I craft up one, two, three, four of these? I totally can, fantastic. And then from there, we just need to craft up four of these elite components, which of course we cannot do just yet because we don't have the crystal tine. What we can do is we can put our reinforced integral components into here with the black iron slit. But if we want to actually complete the craft, we do need four crystal tine ingots. And these are made by crafting in this advanced crafting table that I have just picked up together some lead along with some lapis and some diamond essence. So the diamond essence is the tricky bit because we get diamond essence by growing these diamond seeds and the diamond seeds are made using our infusion altar with four supremium, four diamonds and a prosperity seed base. So my first question is, do we have what it takes to craft a prosperity seed base? We do. Perfect. We can go ahead and whack that on our center pillar. Let me go ahead and take everything off these pedestals here because we no longer need like any of this stuff hanging around on here. In fact, we need to replace all of it with either diamonds or supremium. And then we'll also do a quick inventory clear as well to make sure that we're not carrying around just a bunch of junk that we do not need to be carrying around with us at all times. And then from there, we need to get the supremium. So the diamonds I think we have, right? Do we have four diamonds? We do, nice, we'll put one of those back in the system and the other four just need to go on any four pedestals. Again, the pattern does not matter. You just have to have all of the items down. And then to make the Supremium, we have to go through all of the different tiers of Infusion Crystal, starting with the Inferium Crystal that we already have to turn Inferium to Prudentium. Then we turn Prudentium into Tertium, then Tertium into Imperium, then Imperium to Supremium, and then that's it. We just need to get four Supremium. And so you do need four of the previous tier to make one of the next tier. And so if we need four Supremium, that means that we need 16 Imperium, which means that we need 64 Tertium, which means that we need four stacks of Prudentium, which means that we need 16 stacks of Inferium, and a 16 multiplied by 64 is 1,024. Thankfully, over here, we do have that. We've got 1,450. Now, the Twitch chat does make a good point in that we should probably connect this draw up to our system so we don't have to keep manually 
coming around here every time that we want to access it. And so that should be just as simple as crafting up another one of these storage crates, turning that into an inventory cable connector. And then if we go and whack that onto the, uh, the bottom of this drawer here, like so, we should then be able to connect that up with some inventory cable, and that should give our system access to all of the contents of that drawer. Boom, and boom. Nice. And so now, over in here, we do have 1,464 Inferium. And so let's go ahead and craft up, if we can, four stacks of Prudentium. We're not going to be able to without crafting a new Inferium Crystal. I think that's fine because this one is going to break. It's only got 37 uses left. The next Infusion Crystal here does require the Inferium Infusion Crystal. And so what I am going to do is I'm going to use this all the way up to the very edge. I think we can craft 36 more here. Let me just quickly check. Yep, one, two, three, four. With this having just one use left, if I were to use it one more time, it would just break and then I wouldn't be able to use it. But what I can do is put it in here and use it to craft the next infusion crystal. And that kind of negates the fact that it only had one use left because it goes all the way back up to a full Prudentium infusion crystal, which is pretty great. We can then use this to craft up a ton of Tertium. This one we are gonna have enough because this has got a ton of durability on it. Unfortunately, I don't believe that you can do this no, you can't use a higher tier crystal to do a lower tier craft. It just doesn't work. And uh, from there, we can craft this further up, of course, to make higher tier stuff. But we are going to have to make another one of these. So do I have enough prosperity shards? It looks like the answer should be yes. So we'll make ourselves another one of these Inferium gemstones. We'll make another Inferium infusion crystal. And then from there, let's go ahead and make almost, I guess, as much as we can of this. I think... That should be more than enough. And so let's go ahead and take this and of course craft that around with the new Prudentium Infusion Crystal. Boom. To get us 89 Tertium. Let me just do a quick check. Was 89 correct there? We need four Supremium, which means that we need 16 Imperium, which means we need just 64 actually Tertium. So I think we are pretty good there. We can then take this Prudentium Crystal and craft that up to the next tier of Crystal. We are out of Prosperity Shards though. And so we are gonna have to do a quick bit more appetite straining over in our strainer specifically this one right here let's do this and let's do this nice that's going to get us more prosperity shards good stuff and then we should very easily be able to throw both of those in here along with the crystal that we just used this guy right here that's going to get us the tertium infused crystal from there we can do something like this boom and I guess we might as well go boom as well. And then from there, we can kind of repeat the same setup here to get ourselves the next tier of crystal, that being the Imperium crystal. Again, it doesn't like shift clicking the crystal in. That is fine. Thankfully, the crystal is not used in the uh, in the creating of the craft. And then from there, we can do something like this to get ourselves, hopefully, one, two, three, four, to premium. Nice. And then finally, back over here, one, two, three, and four, we can go ahead and press our non-existent button and get this show on the road. If we take that button out of the system, we can go boom and boom. And again, I do not have my particles on. If I turn them on though, you can kind of see very briefly the, uh, the animation there. The reason I've got my particles off, by the way, is that the roof is constantly dripping water and I don't like it at all. There's probably a way to turn off just the... Um, the roof drop particle effects, but for now I've just got all of my particles kind of turned off to uh, to stop that roof dripping from happening. But now that we have the diamond seeds, we need to grow the diamond seeds. I think that might be as simple as just putting it into the phytogenic insulator and you know hitting it with the time in a bottle. Of course, it's going to be the same idea here where we have to take the seed back and kind of loop it around into the input slot on the phytogenic insulator to get the diamond essence. But we only need to get 13 diamond essence in order to craft up the crystal tine ingot. Now, of course, we do need to get four crystal tine ingots because we need four of the elite components. And so we are going to do quite a bit of this actually to the point where I think it's probably worth me getting another one of these two by one drawers, putting it here and setting it up for diamond essence so that we can kind of set it and forget it. All right, so I did just go ahead and make another phytogenic insulator here. The chat pointed out that they're pretty cheap to make, especially with the super easy machine frames. And so I've just wanked another one of those down with the same setup beneath it. And of course, set this to push and pull and hooked it up to our water setup on at the back there. And I've also put another one of those filtered inventory cables on the bottom as well. 
so that we should be able to see what's going on here. Now, I did just take one that we had randomly in the system, and I think that this is filtered. So I want to set this to reject matching. Does that work? It does. Cool. If I set it to allow matching, it's only going to show the thing that I filtered for. I guess if we wanted to, we could filter it to only show the diamond essence because we don't really care about the seeds, but I honestly don't think that's too much of a problem. And so now I have moved the augments over from this machine temporarily, and we should be able to just kind of speed this up a little bit to get our diamonds in nice and quickly. And of course, once we have those diamonds, we can finally begin making these crystal tine ingots. So again, if memory serves me right, it was something like this, and then we needed lead and lapis. And I think it was just lead, lead, lapis, lapis, like that. It was indeed, nice. And so we just need enough diamond essence to make this happen. It's 13 diamond essence per craft, and so that there should be enough to get us one more here, assuming we put them all in the right slot. Perfect. And then how far are we away from another 13? A little far, but again, we do still have quite a bit of time in our time in a bottle. Uh, we have completely tanked the power there, but if we wanted to, we could uh, maybe try cheese this again with a little bit more tapping over here to eke out just a little bit more power. We should definitely look at uh, increasing our power production though, because right now this is not tremendously great. It does kind of limit us on speeding things up. Although again, this could be uh, actually a problem with the machine just not being able to accept power fast enough, it might not be a problem with the power generation. I think 32X is kind of just too far for the thermal expansion machines. I think anything over 8X might cause you problems. Even 8X looks like it's kind of a little dicey. I think 4X is really the fastest we can go with the setup that we have, but hopefully we should just be two diamond essence away here from getting our fourth and final crystal tine ingot. Of course, while we wait, we can throw the first three into here and begin crafting up those elites components. Nice, and so we, I think, are basically good to go now on this elite crafting table, and then from there, we can begin crafting these shrine skeleton keys. Thankfully, a super easy recipe just sticks and mixed stone ingots, and with our system working uh, overtime here, we do have 92 mixed stone ingots, and so we should be very good to go on that front. Uh, I need one more, there it is, perfect. Let's do this, and let's do this. And whilst that cooks, let's pick up this, and boom, we're good to go. Nice, can we upgrade this to the next tier? We can, that should be a quest complete, a quest line complete. It's not a quest line complete. Which quest did I forego? Oh, I didn't make mixed stone nuggets is what I did not do there. That is fine, let's do this and this. I'm not quite sure what we need the mixed stone nuggets for, but that is a quest line complete, fantastic. Let's drop that down here. Let's grab some sticks and some mixed stone ingots and let's see if we can't make at least one but potentially a couple of shrine keys because i think we are going to need multiple of these along with the hammer that we did make earlier in the series we can now head all the way back over to our chopping board and if we do this and this we should be able to begin getting these fragments nice and so 12 key fragments there is hopefully going to be enough for us to get at least one key. How many do we need here? Each key fragment, this one requires eight. I assume they all require eight. They do. So we need 32 of these uh, shrine key fragments in total. So we are going to have to make uh, a few more of those. But again, just sticks and mixed stone, not particularly difficult at all. And then from there, things get a little bit dicey. I will go ahead and make all 10 here. I think that's going to be fine. Uh, things get dicey because these recipes are all quite expensive and require even more seeds, kind of like the uh, the diamond seed that we just made from mystical agriculture. 42 should be more than enough. And so now if we want to make, say the air key, for example, here, this requires feather blocks along with air essence, yellow dirt, floating blocks, and glass bottles. Glass bottles, super easy. Floating blocks require wool and feathers. Wool, also super easy. We can get that from the, uh, the green string, which we can get from leaves. Feathers though, are a little tricky. We would need chicken essence or potentially just some chickens. I do wonder if we can summon chickens using the summoning block. We totally can. If we right click just any seed onto the summoning block with dirt, we can get a chicken to be summoned. We could then potentially look at making the chicken seed. For the chicken seed, we need to get a soul jar and we need to put some chicken based stuff in there. I think we can also kill chickens whilst holding the soul jar if we use the uh, solium dagger. This guy right here grants additional souls from hostile creatures. That might not work with, oh, I guess this one here works with uh, the passive creatures. 
interesting. So it's possible we could try and do something like that because that's a lot of feathers that we need to get in order to uh, to make the air key. We then have the earth key, which requires grass along with green dirt, green colored logs, melons, and then earth essence. And the water key, of course, requires lapis with marine fabric, raw fish fillets, fish bones, water essence, and then the fire key is nether blocks, campfires, magma blocks, and fire essence. So we do need to make each one of the earth, air, water, and fire seeds so that we can get their respective essences. And I think that each one of those has an associated agglomeratio, so air, earth, water, and fire. The idea here being that you take the air, earth, water, or fire agglomeratio and craft that with Inferium Essence and with Prosperity Seed bases to make the respective seed, which you can then use to get the respective essence. To get the agglomeratios is usually not too difficult. So the fire agglomeratio here is just gravel, dirt, clay, and lava. For that, I think we're just missing lava. Do we have four clay? We do. We've got four dirt and we have four gravel. So we would just need four buckets of lava for that. The water one looks to be exactly the same, but just with water instead of lava, so that's actually fine. The earth one requires grass instead of water or lava, and then the air one just requires glass bottles, which might be the easiest of them all, especially if you put your glass bottles in the system and don't throw them onto the floor. One, two, three, four, perfect. Uh, let's take you off the list. And then grass-wise, I think for that, we're going to want to get uh, some shears, and then I don't think we actually have any grass, but we do have grass seeds, which I believe we can plant onto dirt to make grass. Then we can, of course, burn me all that to progress forward. So let's go ahead and put that maybe over here in this room, which doesn't have as much of a purpose anymore because we've gotten rid of all of the strainers. Once we've got some dirt down, we can right click with our grass seeds. And I would hope that that works. It does. Just make sure you don't have dirt in your offhand when you do it. Uh, the annoying thing here is we're going to have to wait for the grass to spread because just passively here, it's not going to spread. Chat is right here in that we can actually just use our watering can. Once we've got all of our grass, we can go boom and boom. And so now back over here, we should be able to do one, two, three, four of these just as soon as we got our dirt in. Nice. We're probably going to have to go and get some more dirt off of the ocean floor. And I guess while we're down there, we'll also go and see about getting uh, four buckets of lava as well from that uh, little pool that we found deep underground. And back up here with more dirt, we can now craft, hopefully, uh, four of the fire agglomeratio. And then as soon as we have that, I did get one extra bucket of lava here just to have in the system. But uh, as soon as we have that, we can take our buckets out and we can do the exact same thing over here. One, two, three, and four. And we can do the same thing with the water here to get the water agglomeratio. This was actually a fair bit easier than I thought it was going to be. I thought we were going to need a ton of different stuff for each agglomeratio. But now we should just be able to put all of these onto their own pedestals over here. The somewhat tricky bit, I guess, is that we are going to need to get four more prosperity seed bases. And I don't know how many prosperity shards we have. The answer is more than enough. Perfect. Inferior wise, we have got almost 80 again, which is good. And so just like before, I will go ahead and turn my particles back on this time. Let's put you here. Let's go one, two, three, four, like this. We'll start with the air. One, two, three, four. Press the button, and we are going to get ourselves an air seed. Nice. We're now going to go ahead and repeat that for water, fire, and earth. All right, and there we go. We now have the earth, the fire, the water, and the air seeds. And according to the Twitch chat, I'm going to need an awful lot of these. And so it might well be worth us setting up four more phytogenic insulators, all with uh, drawers around them, so we can get a ton of essence kind of coming in passively whilst we work on other stuff, because there is, of course, a ton of other stuff that we still need to get. We still need to get stuff like the grass box here. These are craftable. Uh, we can craft them with like dirt and grass seeds, and that will get us grass blocks, so that's doable. Uh, the green logs here we can get from green saplings. Uh, that we can probably get with the sprayer, I imagine. So it looks like here, I mean, if we'd have picked green earlier in the pack, that would have been helpful here, but uh, we can probably use the spray can, which I believe we can buy from the catalog, inside a sprayer, which we can actually make. And then we can use that to turn some of our saplings green, use that to get some specifically green logs for the earth key. Uh, melons, I think we might have melon seeds from 
all of our endeavors as well. Yeah, I think we do have some melon seeds, so we can look at growing those. Again, the phytogenic insulator would be quite helpful there. And so all of this, I think, is doable. It's just going to take, of course, a little bit of work to make all of that happen. Uh, but real quick, let me go ahead and make a few more phytogenic insulators here and see if we can't get basically all of these up and running. All right, so chat convinced me to expand out the room again here. So we've kind of got a bit of a back room behind this bit here because I was kind of contemplating where to put the phytogenic insulators. I've decided to continue this on along this way. It's a little cramped here, but we now have uh, all four of them down, all set up in the exact same way as before. And I do think it's gonna be sensible here for us to make another draw controller instead of making another one of these inventory cable connectors for every single storage door here. If we just make one draw controller, we can then of course just use the one inventory connector cable on that one draw controller. And then that will connect all of the other drawers together and make all of them accessible to the system, which I think is gonna be the sensible way of doing it. To make that happen, it looks like we are basically just missing some bronze. We should be able to make all of these storage cores. Again, once we have even more bronze, can I get two, three, four of those? I can indeed over here. We've got more than a block worth of bronze, boom and boom. And that should get us a draw controller, which we can go ahead and color to look like everything else. I don't know if we need the white concrete face on it because what I might do is I might kind of just embed this in the ground. Like I might get rid of this, get rid of these two here and here. And then in place of those, if we just put the frame draw like right here, we can then kind of connect this maybe here like that and then throw down our framed cable again right about here that should connect everything up we just then need to color it and i think everything should then be available in the system if we type in essence it's not connected is that because i've done this incorrectly that's our framed draw controller that should be connected to all of these uh, there is inventory cable here that looks like it connects and so I would assume that that would work. Oh, again, this is the filtered one that I've put down and by default, again, it goes to uh, allowed only. I thought it would remember what we had previously. It didn't. That's fine. Let me break this one. And let me just put down the uh, normal non-filtered one. Now that should hopefully work as intended. If we type in essence, we can indeed see all of the essences that we have in there, including the Inferium and Diamond Essence. Let's also do this and let's do this. Perfect. And so now that's gonna just passively work away in the background chat. Next time we'll come back and we'll look at making all of the blocks and items required to get the four different keys here. And then we can use those to get these different blocks, which we can then use to get these I cores. Again, these uh, blocks are obtained through the shrine. So we have to go back to those shrines that we saw earlier in the episode and use these keys on those shrines to get these blocks. From there, we can then duplicate these blocks using more of any given essence, which I think is why we're going to need so much of the uh, air, earth, water, and fire essence going forward. And then the next chapter of the quest line here wants us to make all of these different eyes, the old eye, the redstone eye, the evil eye, the witch eye, etc., uh, to allow us to create, I believe, like the final eye. I think there's one eye in total that uh, is made with all of the other eyes. And then from there, we can start the final, the actual, the end quest line of the quest book here. Before I do that, we did get a rogue key in the shrine earlier. We got this um, room topper key. And uh, when I look at this, it says, can be used on the bottom of a key block to create a nice roof. I don't think you can make this. Never mind, you totally can make this. But um, we got this for free. Let me see about using this on our new little room over here. So if I take some cobblestone, I believe that we want to right click this onto the bottom of like this. And look at that, we get a nice little roof for this very small section of our base. Nice. Unfortunately though, chat, that is all we have time for, for this episode of Submerged. <laughs>